We found changes in young people's relationship with parents and with siblings, um, and an increased closeness that at times they described as unnatural. So that these young people who were moving, were changing in schools or um, changing, perhaps looking to move out, for example, that that was really challenging and they didn't have the support they needed, they felt alone. The hardest hit for those seemed to be young people with disabilities, seemed to be LGBTQ youth, seemed to be youth who maybe were already facing challenges. And so a young person who lived in a household where they didn't experience support, perhaps they were LGBTQ and they didn't have a lot of support from family members, they felt really stuck and were in environments that perhaps didn't provide them the support they needed or the relationships they needed or even were sometimes hostile. Young people also told us about more distant relationships with friends, extended family and family living outside of their household. So for example, um, young people who had a parent who they didn't live with. Children and youth also lost out on extracurricular and other activities um, and they moved into doing more household based activities. So things like baking, increasing their use of technology. Young people also described experiencing more boredom, more worry and gratitude. And younger participants reported feeling anger as well as a result of the pandemic. Across all the ages that we talked to, participants also told us about new things they were doing to cope. So things like spending time outside in nature, finding objects like stuffies or blankets that provided comfort to them. And then young people also reported having greater levels of worry for other people in the world. And they had concern about their own and about other young people's development during this time. And young people who were at transition points, who were going into high school or leaving high school, for example, um, told us that they were feeling especially challenged. With these thoughts in mind, our report concludes with a set of four policy recommendations by its participants and addressed to federal, provincial, territorial, and local governments, as well as to school districts and child and youth service sectors.